What is up, Pokemon trainers? That's right, it's time for week one of the Indigo League of Legends Season 2. We're facing off against Mac or McAllen or the Green Bay Pachirisu. I'm really excited for this battle. I can't wait to face the creator of the IL League that I'm participating in right now. If you have not seen my analysis video for this, be sure to check it out. I'll put it in the description of this video so that you guys can get a look of what Pokemon I'm bringing and, and all that. But I'm part of the San Francisco Swamperts. I have a new overlay for the ILL, the ILL Season 2. Man, that's a tongue twister. But anyway, so you see that I'm packing a very powerful team. I've got a Scarfed Mian Shao, Talon Flame with Gale Wings, an Offensive Fairthorn, Mega Gengar, a Defensive Avalug, and Gastrodon. Because on my opponent's side, I brought Pokemon that corresponded to what he might be bring he might be bringing, and so he has a Languorous Therian form as I expected because of the ability in Tidamate to cut down my attacking power. I have a ton of physical attackers on the team. Half of my members are physically based. I have to face High Dragon too, so bringing Man Shao is a great idea. I don't kick that thing in the face. He even has Shiftery, and Shiftery might have Fake Out and Knock Off, in which bringing Ferrothorn would be a good answer for Shiftery. I'm really surprised he didn't bring Mega Megagross to the spell, but it makes a lot of sense to bring Mega Mawile because of it has access to Sucker Punch and Play Rough and Iron Head in which Sucker Punch can handle Ferrothorn, it can hit Gengar, it can hit Gastrodon pretty hard, it can not really hit Avalog very hard, it might hit Talonflame, so you know, Mega Mawile can handle a couple of my members, but that's okay, as long as I have my Talonflame alive, I can hopefully survive a Sucker Punch and go for Flare Blitz and knock it out if we have to. Slowking and Golem are there for defensive support and pivots for the team, and that's okay. We'll hopefully utilize the likes of my Ferrothorn and my Gastrodon. Gastrodon is going to be very important for this battle because of Scald and getting a 30% chance to burn. We're going to get a certain form, Shiftery, Mega Mawile, and to a lesser extent, Golem. So the game plan, the game plan I set, I have my, my Ferrothorn to set up some entry hazards, and then once I weaken Max Team a little bit, I can revenge kill with my Mega Gengar and Town Flame, and maybe maybe Gastagon might help us out too. You never know. But are you guys ready for the first battle of the Indigo League of Legends? Let's do this, everyone. Hope you enjoy. Okay, so I'm going to start out with Viper, the Scarf Man Shout. My opponent leads out with Langarus or Inform with the Inclusive Make to cut down my attacking power, but that's okay, we're going to go for U turn to begin things off. I'm expecting Langarus or Inform to go with Stealth Ox here. We're going to go into Thornton, the Ferrothorn. He actually goes for a U turn, which is actually great because of my ability Iron Bars and the Rocky Helmet that I have equipped. I was really hoping he would set up some entry hazards there. But he goes for U-Turn, gets some of his health there from my ability Iron Bars and Rocky Helmet. And I'm expecting the High Dragon here to go for a Fire Blast in which Gastrodon can take really well. You see how awesome Gastrodon is. And, and so, okay, you know, I'm expecting him to switch out, but the safe play here is to go for Scald. Because Scald, as I already mentioned in my little team preview analysis there, 
I, I can hit almost everything for some damage. I can burn something. We don't get the burn on the smoking, unfortunately, but that's okay. I have Cossack for it, but unfortunately, I miss it, which is like, ugh, I would have loved to poison that thing to get a little bit of residual damage onto the smoking, who is, I guess, defensive because of the item that he's holding. Love Gilbert. I expected him to switch out again. We're switching out a lot in the spell already. Into maybe Mega Mawile expecting a Toxic. So that's why I went for a cover. But he goes for the switch out to Shifter. I expected him to go for a knockoff. And even if he has to get rid of my Rocky Helmet, I still have Iron Bars intact. My ability. That's going to be very useful. Again, he switches. This is very, you know, strategic here. I go for Gyro Ball. I, I could have gone for Thunder Wave, but that's easily predictable. He goes for U-Turn with his High Dragon now. I'm not really sure why he did that because I have my Iron Bars. I'm not really sure why he did that, but he goes into Smoking after that, and here I try going for Thunder Wave to paralyze the High Dragon if he's Scarfed or something like that. And to discourage a little bit of switching on my opponent's side, we're going to lay down some stealth thoughts. That's the job for Thornton. That's an easy success. He got paralyzed, and that's okay by me. Because I know he might have Fire Blast to hit the Ferroform with. And that's easily going to be solved with Gastagon. I'm switching out again. There's so many switch out it switches excuse me, switches in this battle so far, and this is just, this is what it's all about, you know, you play your best to your ability in this league. You just have to make those really intense plays there. So he has Defog, and I did not expect that. I was hoping he would go with another knockoff or something, but again, there's the Iron Bar, so never mind. Here's where I was like, okay, he might switch out and go into High Dragon again or something, so I went for a another Thunder Wave, which actually didn't work out because he apparently has Substitute. Now he, reveal, he, he reveals to me that he has the berry that raises his speed. I'm not really sure what that's going to work against Ferroform. Maybe it will work with my Scarfing and Shout. I really don't know, but he's going for Gyro Balls, or I'm going for Gyro Balls, and he's going for knockoffs. I have armor bars. I'm not really sure why he's doing that. Either that's his best move or something. He does have his own stealth house. I'm going to lay down my own stealth house again because he went for defog to get rid of them earlier with his shiftery. I'm okay with that because I can utilize Avalog to rapid to rapid spin those stealth house if I have to. But I decided to go into Gastrogon again. Because this is an, off an awesome opportunity to go Scald and hopefully burn the Golem. I don't get the burn, unfortunately, again. It's a 30% chance, but if it's used against you, it's like 100%. Not really, but that's just how it works, everyone. He goes for Stone Edge and misses. I'm not really sure. I think he's predicting me to switch out. Because Stone Edge wouldn't work against Gastrodon all that well. So... And he actually told me after the battle, he was hoping for a critical hit. And that, that's, I don't know, that's not a good strategy because when you need a critical hit the most, it never occurs. So anyway, we're going to take that Stone Edge again. That's not very effective. And we take out Golem with another Skull. So Gastrodon is doing pretty well so far. He goes into, or my opponent, Mac, is going into his land is there in form, goes for U-turn, and based on how well I'm taking these hits, this is a physically defensive Gastrodon, who's taking these hits extremely well. Yeah, I'm really impressed with Gastrodon in this battle so far. I go for counter! This is the first time I get to use counter with this Gastrodon. And we see it working out here because he went for U-Turn. If you're not familiar with what Counter does, it takes the attacking move U-Turn and doubles that power and uses it against the opposing Pokemon. In this case, it's going to be Mega Mawile. And I'm really happy about this because I go for Scald. He actually gets a minimum roll with the Play Rough attack. 
and I get to burn the Mega Mawile, and that's huge! We got rid of his Mega, and that means I can use my Mega Gengar and my Kellen Flame if we have to. Gastrodon, you're amazing! You did a lot of work in this battle! I go into Man's Shell afterwards, Viper, because again, I'm scarfing saying, Hey, I can high jump kick you in the face! But I actually did expect him to switch out into Slowking to take the high jump kick. We're going to go for U turn instead. And that does a ton of damage because of a critical hit. The paralysis on the Slowking isn't going to matter in the long run. This is a great opportunity to bring in my shiny Gengar for the first time in this battle and Mega Evolve safely and go for a Sludge Wave. I could have gone for a Shadow Ball because, well, it's super effective, but Sludge Wave can hit the Hydreigon, it can hit... what's his other Pokemon? I don't remember, but we hit Swoking and we take him out. We have Hydreigon, like I already mentioned, and after Stealth Rock damage, Sludge Wave at that range is going to KO the Hydreigon, which is fantastic. So, in reality, I- oh yeah, we have Flamingo to start from there. In reality, I don't think we're going to use Townflame or Avalug or any of those guys in this battle because, guess what? Mega Gengar is going to clean up here instead by taking that Rock Slide, which I was actually surprised about because Mega Gengar isn't really that defensive by all means. But that's it everyone, I get to win this battle 6-2 or 4-0. I never got a chance to use Talonflame or Avalug in this battle, and that's A-OK -okay by me, and that's- it, it was just a terrible match for my opponent. He claims that I hassed him out huge, but even still, I enjoy the match. So right now, the San Francisco Swampers are 1-0. We're heading on to week two. I don't know what my opponent is, but I will be making a team analysis video for week two. Be on the lookout for that, everyone. So, if you enjoyed the battle video, hit that like button, subscribe, and comment below of what you enjoyed in this video, and I'll see you guys all next time. Alright, bye trainers.